We have entered Lent, and it is the first Sunday of Lent. And Lent is that time of preparation as we move towards Easter. It's a time of repentance, a time of penitence, a, a time to seek the mercy of God. And it really prepares our hearts and moves our minds towards Jesus Christ all through Lent as we move towards the resurrection on Easter morning. To do this, to sort of focus our minds and focus our hearts on Jesus, we here at First Church are going to be going through the seven last words of Christ. There are, uh, there's a tradition of, you know, seven last phrases. It's seven phrases that God says upon the cross. As Jesus hangs upon the cross, he says these words. And each week we'll take one of those phrases, one of those things that Jesus says on the cross, and look at it. They can be challenging. They can be difficult. Most of all, I think they're quite mysterious. As we work through these, though, I think that they give us a kind of glimpse into the life of God. Because oftentimes, it is a conversation, really. It is Christ crying out to the Father. And we get this glimpse into the relationship or the life of the Trinity through the words of Christ on the cross. This morning, we take our text from Luke's Gospel, the 23rd chapter, verse 34. Christ and two criminals have been led to the skull or the hill or Golgotha. And the first thing after they are put up on their crosses, Jesus says this. Father, forgive them, for they they do not know what they are doing. That's our, that's the first thing that Jesus says when he's on the cross in Luke's gospel. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Oftentimes we immediately, when we see that, we jump to that we need to forgive others. And that is certainly true. And I think I'll get there. But I want to look at what this says about the life of God. Because I think each time we get a saying that Jesus says, like I said, we get a glimpse at who God is. And here, God in the person of Jesus Christ is both divine and human, flesh and blood, says, as he hangs on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. This is, if this is a glimpse into the heart of God or into the nature of God, it's a difficult one. I think it's difficult. Because it means that as we look in, look in and we mysteriously think about what it means to forgive or what it means that God is a God of forgiveness, it can challenge us in our own lives. And if we are going to be a people who love God, who believe we are loved by God and then love God, we have to be a people of forgiveness because that is the life of God. Here we get Jesus saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Crying out to the Father to forgive. And Jesus is forgiving as well. Because that seems to be the nature of God is a kind of radical forgiveness. And through Christ's act on the cross, we are sort of drawn into that life, into a life of radical forgiveness. This is difficult. We don't always want to forgive. We don't always want that to be the kind of God that we have. Sometimes I am more comfortable with the God who executes judgment upon my enemies. (laughs) 
I see someone that I think is in the wrong and I think, hmm, I wish God would bring down justice upon them. And yet at the very moment, at the very most vulnerable moment, God's most vulnerable moment, there is forgiveness. There is this forgiving the very ones who are harming you. In the book that we're working through uh, as a congregation, it is uh, Dr. Stanley Hauerwas's book um, on the seven last words of Christ, Cross Shattered Christ. He tells a brief story at the end of chapter one, which deals with this uh, phrase, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He tells a story of Brother Christian, a Trappist monk who traveled to Algeria and was at a monastery there uh, called Tiberin in the mountains, the Atlas Mountains of Algeria. And during this time in the mid-1990s, there is strife between the, gover the Algerian government and uh, Muslims and extremists and it is a time of sort of violence. And it tells the story of this monastery who is sort of uh, attacked, if you will, a couple of times, but the last time the, the extremists, the gunmen, take the monks, load them in a van, and take them off. Brother Christian, who kind of leads these monks in, in the mountains, sees that his death might be coming because he chooses to stay there even in the midst of the strife to help the people. He writes a letter to his family to kind of say thank you. He also, also does something exceptional. I want to read just a little bit from that letter that Brother Christian wrote before he was eventually executed by extremists. He writes this, If it should happen one day, and it could be today, that I become a victim of the terrorism that now seems to encompass all the foreigners living in Algeria, I would like my community my church, my family, to remember that my life was given to God and to Algeria, and that they accept that the sole master of all life was not a stranger to this brutal departure. I would like when the time comes to have a space of clearness that would allow me to beg forgiveness of God and my fellow human beings and at the same time to forgive with all my heart the one who will strike me down. Brother Christian, knowing that he will probably be executed, writes the letter and says that he forgives the one who strikes him down. I have to admit that sometimes this kind of forgiveness eludes me and I struggle with it, as I think we all do. That we would forgive the one who harms us because it is so easy for us to carry it around, to carry around that wrong that has been done to us. And yet, Brother Christian, before he even dies, forgives the one who kills him. But he does it because he says his life was completely given over to God. And the picture that we get of God here is a God who forgives. So on some level, to be followers of Christ, to give our lives completely over to God, means that we see this radical forgiveness, the very nature of God and we participate in it through being forgiven and through forgiving. He goes on to write, as he's saying thank you 
to his family. In this thank you, which is said for everything in my life from now on, I certainly include you, my last minute friend, who will not know, who will not have known what you are doing. I commend you to the God in whose face I see yours. And may we find each other happy, good thieves in paradise, if it please God, the Father of us both. He actually writes to the one who kills him, saying that he hopes to see him in paradise together. That is the nature of the God we serve. That's who God is. It's who God reveals God's self to be on the cross. Maybe there's someone out there that you need to forgive. Maybe there's someone out there that you are at odds with. Freedom of our souls comes through receiving forgiveness and then forgiving others. It's why we say every Sunday, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We forgive because that's who God is and that's who loves us and who we are learning to love. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.